to the commentaries of Judith Butler, what people said about her. My reading of Judith Butler is that she believes in... My reading of Judith Butler, yeah, is that she says that sex is a social construct. That's my reading of her. In the beginning of her book... No, no. Gender is known to be a social construct. Everyone, even a, even a second wave will tell you that, right? There's, there'll be no difference between second and third wave then. What I'm saying is that in my reading of Judith Butler, she's not saying that just sex, just gender is a social construct. My reading of her says that she's saying that gender, uh, that sex is also a social construct. Now you could, you could have a right to, to interpret her differently. I'll tell you why I believe that if you want. It's a long discussion, it might become technical. But I could tell you why I believe that. But the point is this, is if you believe in that sex is a social construct, which is what lots of third wave feminists do maintain, yeah? Then rape and racism become social constructs. Because if biology, look, here's the thing. In my book, I wrote this, yeah? I wrote this in my, I think, chapter two of my book. I actually done a riff, I done a, no, no, you don't know it yet because it hasn't come out yet. It's coming out, it's coming out. Uh, yeah, of course, brother. Look. What I wrote was as follows. I refuted Judith Butler because I wrote, I wrote, I read her books, yeah? Maybe not all of her books, but a lot of her books. And what she says in, in one of her books is that there's a differentiation between, basically she says this genus, this thing that we call man, and this thing that we call woman, yeah? That is a social construct. It's been socially constructed. That's her argument. And she says the fusion between gender and sex is where does gender start and sex begin, or sex start and gender begin? She says, in the beginning of her book, that actually we start with a presupposition that we have a sex, which then has an imposition of it, of like social constructed gender. She's saying even that thing that we're calling sex, right, is socially constructed itself. Now you could interpret that in two ways. You can say that, does she think the penis is a social construct, or the vagina is? You could say no, she might not believe that. But she might believe that the conceptions of sex in conjunction with those biological discourses are socially constructed. She's a post-structuralist. Absolutely, right. right. Yeah, good. So she's a post-structuralist. She uses post-structure. Now the thing is with post yeah. is a bit more complicated than it's just a social construct. It's a slightly Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean I'm not a post-structuralist and I'm not a fan of Jews but yeah. it's a little bit more complicated than sex is a social construct. Well look, I you never I never sex, reduced it to that. Understanding yeah. of sex is you wouldn't say I think social constructs, you would say it is, it is constructed, it is socially constructed, it's different than it's a social construct. Anyway, I don't want to interrupt you, I just look, look, so many people I think you're right. Look, third wave, this wave, it, feminism. Look, Judith Butler, as you said, she's a post-structuralist. She relied on the kind of works of Michael Foucault, right? You like him, eh? Yeah? Oh, you hate him? I'm Derrida, I, I hate him so Yeah, Jack Reese Derrida as well, in Gramology. Derrida's you know, book Well, look, it depends on what you say, everyone's opinion, right? But look. What I'm saying, what I was trying to show is that also in her book, and I can't remember where exactly, but it's, um, it's take my word for it. Take <laughs> she, look, my point I was making to them was this, is that third wave approaches, queer approaches, and to a lesser extent, even LGBT approaches. I'm talking about academic approaches, yeah? Yeah, yeah, you're talking about queer theory. Yeah, queer theory. I'm talking, those approaches, when, um, when compared with second wave feminism, you'll find there's a big difference. In fact, in my, in my opinion, they refute second wave feminism to a great extent. Yeah. They, would, they would agree. Like, that's yeah. why we have the sex wars, that's why we have turfs now. Yeah, the sex wars, are, uh, yeah, look, that's, that's a good thing to bring up. But what I would say is this, is that, so this idea, this is the point. The, 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 the difference between second and third wave feminism is so pronounced, in my view, that they're almost two different ideologies altogether. Like for instance, look, Second wave feminism depends on biological determinism, not determinism, but biological identification. It depends on very clear, clearly defined uh, notions of manhood and womanhood. Isn't that right? So, because look, if you think about it, the whole, uh, the whole argument of second wave is women are being oppressed by men, have been, do, have been exploited throughout well, history. They all think that. They, they mean all the ways. I, I don't think so. I genuinely don't think so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that about third waves. Butler attacked that notion. She said, look, the patriarch is problematic because it assumes that there is one layer you know, of man and one layer of woman, that binary, that kind of binary image that the men are attacking the woman is a problematic one. She goes further than that though, she says this, she talks about colonial theory, because she mentions Said, Edward Said, or, um, Orientalism, yeah? She mentions him and she says that, look. Oh, thanks. 
She says that. Yeah, so she says about him that. Shit, bro, you double mic. You're important now. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say, bro? So what I'm trying to say to you is, therefore, when we use those things now, because we're having a discussion about religion, like Islam or Christianity or Judaism or any religion you want. Oh, I thought we were talking about something interesting. That's annoying. I thought we were talking no, about no, 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 no. If, if we're having that discussion about religion oh, or about society or about politics, about no Come problem. On, no, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm talking, I wrote a book called Fifth Way Feminism. Oh, right, right? That, it's not, it, by the way, the book that I wrote was not theological in any way, shape, or form. It's coming out soon. Right. What I'm saying is, yeah, so this, this conception, which form of feminism do we want, should we now use? to attack the, um, the oriental religions, right? Should we use second wave feminism or third wave feminism or first wave, fe which one is it? So what I'm saying is from a colonial perspective or post-colonial perspective, the westerner or the western post-colonialists, I'm not saying all westerners, of course, yeah, but some of them will choose, all right, Islam is not an equal religion, right? It's not, uh, there's no equality between men and women in Islam. No problem, have that, have that assumption. Have that assumption, right? But my question is, what are you basing that on? Is it first wave conceptions, second wave conceptions, third wave, or, or what is it, right? I'm, I'm really sorry, I don't want to be a stooge in someone's video, but I'll, I'll show your hands. Thank you. Oh, like, no. Will shakes Mohammed Hijab's hand. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be the title of the video. I just don't want to be a man. No, no, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you. So, yeah, that makes sense, yeah?